So maybe uh, you are not graduating, but maybe you're going through a season of transition yourself. Anytime we go through transition, we go from one chapter to the next. It's tough. It's difficult. There can be some rocky roads. But I think at the end of the day, all of us want to experience some certain level of success. Would you agree? We all want to achieve something meaningful and we want our life to mean something. We want to make sure that we're, uh, that we're moving forward in a way that, um, you know, is not only um, has us at peace, but we feel like we're accomplishing everything that God wants for us and has for us. And, um, you know, I think a lot of times as people begin to think about, as we think about our future, we tend to kind of get the cart before the horse, if you will. And here's what I mean by that. A lot of times when we talk about our future, we think about it. We say, I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know what my next step is. I have thought about my next season. I, 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 I. And you're thinking to yourself, what's wrong with that? Well, think about it. So oftentimes... We get it backwards because we think that it's really about us. And the reality is it's not about us, but it's about him. It's about him. It's not about us. It's about him. Uh, You know, I I love what Rick Warren said. He wrote an incredible book. If you haven't read it, it's called Purpose Driven Life. It's a phenomenal book. And he talks about this in his book. And one thing that he says in his book is that he says, you didn't create yourself, so there's no way you can tell yourself what you were created for. And if you think about that, you were created by design, by a designer, and God had you in mind when you took that first breath of air, God was thinking about you, and he was setting your course even then. And so we've entitled today's short talk, The Path to Your Purpose. You know you're on a path right now. Raise your hand if you know you're on a path. Raise your hand if you know that God has a purpose. Today we're going to talk about that for just a moment. Amen. You've probably heard us say this before, but you were made by God for God. And until you understand that, your life will never make sense. Until you understand that God created you, that he has a purpose and he has a plan for your life, regardless of what age you are or what stage you are in, until you understand that God is your creator and you were made for him, your life is never going to make sense. No matter what title you receive in this life, no matter how much money you pad up your bank account with, no matter what status you have, none of that will matter because at the end of your life, you and I both will one day stand before almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. And he will say one of two things to us. He will either look at us and he will say, well done, my good and faithful servant. You have served me well. You did what you were created to do. You use those gifts and those talents I placed in you while you were in your mother's womb. You used them for my glory. Or he will say, depart from me. You doer of iniquity. I never knew you. That doesn't mean he doesn't know you exist. No, he knows you exist. He's saying, you never had a relationship with me. You chose your own path because I gave you free will. You never wanted to align your life with my perfect plan for you. So you struggled throughout your life to do your own thing. And even through all of your accomplishments, you always felt a sense of a lack of fulfillment. Why? Because you weren't doing what I created you to do. And I think at that moment, if there were tears in heaven, that's when they would be dropping off of God's face. Because it's like a parent who sees the potential of their kids and their kids choose to not live up to the potential that they have. And yet there comes a point in each of our lives where we get to choose. It becomes our decision as to what path we will take. So today we wanna help you to begin to understand how to choose the path that God has for you. The Bible says in Colossians chapter one and verse 16, I'm reading out of the message version, it says this, for everything, say everything. This is the apostle Paul talking, he says for everything, absolutely everything above and below, visible and invisible, rank after rank after rank of angels, everything. I think he got his point across. Everything got started in him 
and it finds its purpose in him. We will not experience the purpose for which we were created apart from God. It cannot happen. It's impossible because he created everything, including us. Today, we wanna help you to understand two really important things. If you're going to align your life in this new season, that whether you're a graduate or whether you are a new believer or whether you're here today and you're like, man, I've lived my whole life trying to figure this out. We're gonna help you today. Here we go. Two things you've gotta know before today ends. One, God has a path and a purpose already planned out for you. He already wrote your story. He knows exactly what he created you to do. He knows exactly what your purpose is. You gotta understand that you, it gives me so much peace, guys. Brad and I have four teenagers. You guys know that two of our beautiful girls were up here. Our son got married last week. We've got another son that has graduated and is starting life. And for each of them, it gives me as a parent so much peace to know God already has a plan. He may not have shown each of our kids yet what their purpose is, but I remember being in their shoes. I remember being 18 years old, headed into college and trying to decide which school do I go to? I have a scholarship for one and I feel like I'm supposed to go to this other one. What do I do? I remember being on my knees. I remember seeking godly counsel and asking my parents, what do you think I should do? But at the end of the day, guess who had to make that tough decision? I did. Each of us have that that time in our life where we have to start making those decisions, but to know God has a plan, there's so much peace in that. Then it's a matter of finding out how, God, am I supposed to know what in the world it is? How many have ever felt like that? God, just tell me. Just tell me what you want. I've told God that so many times in my life. God, just tell me what you want me to do, and I will obey. Just tell me. Well, we're going to help you with that today because the second thing we want you to know is God's word. God's word is a lamp into your feet and it's a light into your path. The psalmist said that. And today we're going to dive in a little bit deeper. We're going to tear that apart and help you to understand how do you actually use the word of God to light your next step? If you're a graduate, I'm sure many people have been asking you, all right, so what's your plan? What's your next step? And some of you are like, I've got it all mapped out for the next six years. I know exactly what I'm going to do. I've already got mapped out who I'm going to marry. He doesn't know it yet, but I got it all planned out. And some of you are like, (laughs) I don't know. I don't know what the next step is. I'm just going to spend this summer just trying to figure it out. Can I just give you some peace right now? It's okay. It's totally okay to not know what the heck is going on. Because understanding God's will and living his purpose and plan comes in steps. So you don't need to know everything right now. You're not going to know everything right now. In fact, God's not going to show you everything all in one shot. Because if he did, you would crawl into the fetal position and you would start sucking your thumb and crying. If you knew what God had in store for you because you would think it's way too big. Because guess what? It is. It's way bigger than you. And the only way you're going to accomplish it is through him and with him. But he's going to need to teach you and grow you into that person step by step by step by step. And some of you today, you're 52 years old and you're like, I still don't know what I'm doing. I don't understand. But guess what? There's so much grace in that because today is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. He can speak to you even today. But we're going to show you a formula to begin to understand and acknowledge this incredible plan that he has for you. And I believe there's no reason why any of us in this room can't experience that in a very full and meaningful way before you meet your maker. Are you excited about that? So this, this first thing that we want to talk about just for a second is that he does have that path and that purpose already planned out for you. And and this came to me uh, in a very strong reality when I was about 18 years old, and I I honestly didn't know this truth. I didn't know that God had everything mapped out for me and planned out for me. But I realized it when I was driving from Kansas City to Tulsa. This was my first uh, all-by-myself road trip. It was, it was quite an, an experience. I loved it. I was having so much fun. Man, I'm just cruising down the highway, got the radio cranked up, the windows down, and I'm just having a blast just driving. 
And I was supposed to meet up with some colleagues in Tulsa, and then we were going to head down to Dallas. But I had a lot of time on the road to just, just drive and just think. And, you know, at this time in my life, what's really important for you to understand in respect to this story is that I was not really living for God. I had a knowledge of God, and you might be in that place in your life, but I didn't have a real and life-changing relationship with Jesus that was contagious. I had a knowledge of God. I would have told you that I loved God, but I didn't know how to hear God. I, I didn't understand the steps. I didn't understand that he had a plan and a purpose. I didn't know any of that. And so here I am driving, and all of a sudden, you know, I start to close in on uh, the Joplin city limits, and something strange just came over me. It's like all of a sudden, I just felt this really strong draw and this deep connection to this town that I had no connection to. For whatever reason, I just felt like, man, I don't know. I just really resonate with this. It wasn't anything that I saw that I enjoyed, that I liked about it. It wasn't anything physical that I saw with my eyes. It was a spiritual feeling that I had a connection to this place with no reason to have a connection. As across the Oklahoma state line, I'm still driving down I-44 and about 10, 15 minutes in, I'm just looking around and I, and I just thought to myself, this is beautiful, just the green grass and the blue skies and this is really, really pretty. And I thought to myself, I would really like to live here. I'm 18, I live in Kansas City, no connection. And all of a sudden I just, I, I sensed the Lord just speak to my heart and he said, you will. He said, you're going to marry a woman in this area you're going to have your children. You're going to raise them up right here in Northeast Oklahoma. He even went as far to tell me, you're going to do your grocery shopping in Joplin. No joke. No joke. And I'll tell you, uh, just last week, we loaded up at Sam's Club in Aldi. And <laughs> if you're ever shopping in Joplin, you probably see us, you know, and we're there all the time. And, and this is our life. All of our kids were born in Joplin, right? This is, this is our life. If you know the rest of the story, this is where I ended up. And it's not because I picked up my stuff and said, well, mom, dad, God spoke to me, so I'm moving. <laughs> That's not how it happened. When I have time someday, I'll tell you the whole story, but it was miraculous how I ended up in Joplin. It wasn't by my choice at all. And so I learned very, you know, uh, in, in a powerful way then that God had a plan for me, that it wasn't my plan but it was his plan. And the word of God actually shows us this in Proverbs 19 and 21. That's one of my favorite scriptures. I love it. It says, you can make many plans, but the Lord's purpose will prevail. Now, and here's what this doesn't mean. It doesn't mean that you have plans and at the end of the day, God's purpose is going to prevail. So it doesn't matter what you do. Just live your life and God's will is going to happen. That's not at all what this scripture is saying. What it's saying is, is that God's purpose supersedes your plans. God's plan is bigger and better than any plan you could ever come up with on any given day of the week. I don't care if you want to go take a retreat for two weeks in Branson and come up with all the most amazing dreams you can come up with as, as to how awesome your life can be. And you plan it all out and write it all down. God's plan is better. It's better. He has something way better than what you could ever imagine or what you could ever think. Now, here's the beauty of this reality, and I want this to really get down deep in your heart. I wouldn't be here today experiencing the fullness of God's plan if I hadn't have said yes. If I hadn't have learned how to listen to the voice of God, if I wouldn't have learned how to understand the word of God, if I wouldn't have leaned in in that deep, meaningful, life-changing, contagious relationship with Jesus, I wouldn't be here living the better plan that he had for me. It's because I was willing to surrender everything and say no to the things that I thought I wanted and that I thought was better. And instead to say yes to God, whatever you have for me, that's what I want and that's what I'm going to do. If I like it or if I don't like it, unconditionally, I'm yours. I belong to you. I lay myself at your feet. Do with my life whatever you will. Yeah. That's why 
I'm able to experience everything that he has planned for me. And you know what's amazing? Is I'm nothing. I, I am nothing. I don't deserve to stand on a platform. I don't deserve to hold a mic and to share the gospel of Christ. But because this willing vessel who was broken, that God has miraculously saved and changed and transformed, because he said yes, do you know how many thousands of people have heard the gospel of Jesus Christ? Isn't that amazing? Just imagine what God will do with you if you will just say yes. If you will just say yes, God, I am yours. I belong to you. Do with me whatever you will. Your plan is better than mine. So God, whatever you have, I'm all in. Imagine. Imagine with me. What could it be like? Well, let's look at it this way just for a second. How many in this room? Don't raise your hand. How many in this room? You might be living the plan that he didn't have for your life. You're living it now because you didn't learn to say yes. You didn't learn to listen. You didn't learn to get into his word. Hey, guess what? I'm here to tell you it's not too late. Today is the day. We're going to show you in this next point exactly what you need to do to begin experiencing the fullness of God's plan and his purpose and his pleasure. And you will love your life because guess what? We delight in the Lord and, and in everything that God has for us. We delight in him and he uses us and you'll never be truly fulfilled and satisfied and really, really happy until you're doing it his way. I love what this guy, Larry Randolph, said God will fulfill all he has promised you. He'll do his job. He'll fulfill his end of the bargain, but he's not obligated to fulfill your potential. He's not obligated to step out and, and, and do it for you and make you obey everything that he's asked you to do. That's on you. You're going to have to decide for yourself that you're going to live the plan and do the plan and obey the plan and fulfill the plan. There's so much potential inside of you, so much that God has for you if you're only willing to just obey and say yes and learn to listen. So the second thing that you have to know, and this is really how you do it, the psalmist David said it in Psalms 119, 105. He said, your word is a lamp to guide my feet and it's a light for my path. I've promised it once and I'll promise it again. I will obey your righteous regulations. When I was growing up, I loved to deer hunt. My family's avid deer hunters. You saw my twin daughters. They were the ones beautiful on one side, camo on the other with big bucks because that's Come just what on, we somebody. love to do, all right? Mm -hmm. So I remember when I was about 12 years old and I was going to hunt by myself because I grew up with all brothers, had a little baby sister many years later. So it wasn't like there was a buddy system until I got married Did I didn't have a hunting partner. Um, so at 12, it was time for me to go on my own. Dad had me a tower ready and it was built and I was going through through the woods, in the dark, all alone, all right? I don't know how many of you like to walk in the woods by yourself in the pitch black, but it's a little bit spooky because here's why. There's nothing happening. You hear every cricket. You hear everything, and your mind begins to imagine what might be out there that you can't see, right? The cougar that your, your brothers have told you about, all the crazy stories, all the things that could pop out at you. Can I, can I tell a story? No. I know. But this is a really good story. If I, I have to tell it because right, they're, no they're going to appreciate this story. Speaking of a cougar. Okay. okay make it quick. Okay. So, no joke. Like one day, one afternoon um, after church, we, we come home and we have horses and they were acting really out of character. They were just kind of like running around the pasture. And I was like, what is up with them? They're acting so weird. That's not like them. And so anyway, next morning, I go out to feed and water them, and I notice we have a white horse, male, he's like 15 hands tall, he's huge, and he is covered in blood. He's got deep claw marks down both sides of his rump, all, he's got claw and bite marks all over his legs and above his eye, he got into a nasty mess with something. And um, come to find out, we called around, called neighbors and checked trail cams and all that. So there's a mountain lion that apparently jumped our horse. 
And of course, he didn't, he didn't kill him, so he's okay. <sighs> he's all right. Long process, but he, he's healed up just fine. He's, he's fine. Um, so, you know, my wheels are spinning now. I'm like, I was, I was thinking to myself, I wish I would have been there because there wouldn't have been no more mountain lion if I, if I would have been there in that moment. And so I'm talking with family at lunch, and man, we're just talking and, and sharing all these stories and come to find out there are mountain lions in this area. In fact, I, I saw one a couple years ago, but they were telling me, yeah, that, that sometimes they're yellow, sometimes they're actually black. And I was like, I thought black panthers were only like in the jungle, but no, cougars can be black as well. And so, you know, the next few days, next few weeks, I'm really on edge. And, and on Sunday mornings, we come down here really, really early in the morning. It's always dark. And I have the, 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 the privilege of being able to drive one of the golf carts to get them down to the church because we live really close. And so I'm driving and it is pitch black. All right. So I'm on edge and I'm, I'm just thinking in my mind, this black panther comes out. I'm going to be ready for him. All right. I'm going to be ready for <laughs> So, I, so I'm, I'm, I'm driving, and this golf cart goes 0.5, okay? <laughs> and so I'm driving, all right? I'm driving down, I'm driving down the road, and, and all of a sudden, I'm not kidding you. This is not made up. <laughs> right behind the golf cart, driving 0.5 miles an hour, I hear, ba -ba, ba -ba, ba -ba, ba -ba, ba -ba. I turn around and see this black, I'm not kidding, huge black white teeth, and I go, ah! And it's my dog. <laughs> I was like, pow, 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 pow. So we buried our dog that afternoon. So my dog's dead. The horse is alive, but my dog's dead. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I did not shoot the dog, but I have a solid black lab with really big white teeth. <laughs> Fact is, it is scary to be out in the dark all alone. But you know what? I peed myself. <laughs> promise you. What you needed that day, and what I used to use in the woods, I've got one. Will you kill the lights for me? Broadcast is going to love me. When it's completely pitch black, and your screen has gone black at this point because you can't see in here. You know, when I was in the woods, I finally turn your light off. Come on. No, I just realized like no, something's still lighting me up. Line. I've got my own. Come on, buddy. There we go. Thank you. You're ruining my illustration. Okay. <laughs> when it's pitch black, in that moment, I wasn't concerned about what I could see far away from me. I wasn't trying to look down the road. I wanted a light just right there. I just wanted to be able to see my next step. I just wanted to know what I was about to step on or what was about to step on me. And what I want you to begin to understand today is the psalmist David was saying God's word, that's what God's word is. When the life is dark and you can't see anything and you're not sure what your next step is, you're not sure what the direction is God has for you. If you will open up your word and you will begin to read God's word, God's word begins to give you your next step. It doesn't illuminate everything. God doesn't show you the path way down there. He just says, I'm going to give you just the next step, the next door I'm going to open. You can go ahead and turn those lights back on now. I love what Joshua, Joshua is a guy that I love. And for a lack of time, I'm not going to tell you his whole story. But Joshua was the guy who took Moses's place after Moses died. And he leads the children of Israel into the promised land. Joshua was a guy who he wanted so bad to do what God wanted him to do. He wanted to be successful and he knew God had a plan for his life. So in the beginning of his, of his leadership at, the, at that transition of becoming an adult, God speaks to him and he basically says, Joshua, I know you want to be successful. I'm going to tell you how. And I don't know how many times, I mean, you know, we read self-help books, we listen to podcasts, we do all of these things and yet God clearly lays it out in his word. If you want to be successful, this is what he told Joshua. Joshua 1 I'm going to read verses seven through nine very quickly. He says, be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey. Say obey. Here we go. Be careful to obey all the instructions Moses gave you. Don't deviate from them. Don't turn to the right or the left. Then you will be successful in everything you do. Then he goes one step deeper. He says, study 
study the book of instruction continually. That's the word of God. He says, study it continually. Meditate on it day and night. That's think about it over and over and over so that you will be sure to obey everything written in it. Listen to this. Only then, say that, only then. Only then will you prosper and succeed in all you do. So he told Joshua very clearly, you want to succeed in life. You want to succeed in this next season of your life. You're halfway through your life and you feel like I've missed my purpose. I don't even know what it is. Then we have to do what Joshua did. Study the word of God continually. Meditate on the word of God day and night. That means think about the scripture over and over and over. When you're reading in the morning, Find a verse and hold on to it all day long. Ponder it in your mind. God, what do you mean? What is it you're trying to say to me today? And third, obey it. Whether you like it or not, you didn't write it. I didn't write it. We, didn't, we aren't the creator of the universe. We don't get to choose. Obey it. Guys, if you do that, God promises to prosper you. He promises that you will be a success. And as a young person, I remember those moments, those transitional moments where I had to make that decision as many of you. And here's what I want you to understand is the closer you get to God, the clearer you will hear his voice. You see, I know what you're thinking right now. You're like, well, Missy, that's great. I mean, I can read the word of God, but it's not going to tell me what college to go to. Or do I go to college? It's not going to tell me what guy I'm supposed to marry. It's not going to tell me, do I take this job or do I not? Do I move to the new city or do I not? Listen to me. When you want to understand God's will, you need to understand God. You got to get to know him, right? Right? Whoever's closest to you in your life, I can tell you what Brad's thinking before he even says it because we've been married almost 22 years. I can tell by the look on his face what he's thinking. Why? Because I know him. Follow me. The closer you get to God, that's why he was telling Joshua, Joshua, you get in my word. You're going to need to hear my voice. And the only way you're going to be able to hear my voice is if you're close to me. You got to stay close to me. There's so many times in my home that Brad or one of my kids will be on the other end of the house. And many times I might be in my room and I'll, hey, Brad. Hey, Brad. Brad, did you hear me? I was hollering at you. Oh, what? I didn't even hear you. But guess what? When you're far away, sometimes it's hard to hear. Sometimes I think there's selective hearing, but that's a marriage lesson for another day. But when you get up close to someone, they have no choice but to hear you. If you sincerely want to align your life with God's plan, you sincerely want to fulfill his purpose for why you were created using those gifts and that personality and the talents that he formed you in your mother's womb with. If you really want that, I know it sounds like it could be too easy this way, but guys, it all starts right here. I could take you through every step of our life. Every door that I was saying, God, do I walk through it? Do I not? And we begin to pray this way as a single. And then when we were married, God, here's an opportunity. Here's two schools. Do I go to this one? Do I go to this one? God, shut the door that you don't want me to go to. Open the door that you do and give me peace. And the closer you stay to God, he speaks to you. It's just that easy. If you've never heard God's voice, it's because you're too far away. Did you hear me? If you're not hearing God's voice, you're too far away. You're having selective hearing. Get in the word of God. Begin to learn to hear his voice and God will direct every step of your life.
Amen. Let's pray today. Father, I, it's my desire that everyone in this room and everyone joining us online today would have that desire in their heart to want to know your plan, to want to know your purpose. I pray, God, that you would just stir our hearts even now under the sound of my voice. God, every person that hears my voice right now, God, I pray that there would be a stirring in their heart to want to know your plan, to want to live their purpose, to want to know what their next step looks like. But God, you made it clear in your word what, what that step looks like, and it's, it's, it's that lamp of your word Step by step by step by step, revealing the path, the next step, what it is you have, drawing close to you each and every day, every step of the way. I pray that you would put that desire in each of our hearts today, God. And I pray, God, for follow through. I pray, God, that... that for those that are just not as committed to your word today, God, I pray that, that, that there would be commitment today, God, that there would be a commitment to your word, to drawing close to you and being with you and drawing close to you, God, through prayer and the study of your word and the meditating of your word, God. Help us to know who you want us to be, what you want us to do, how you want us to live, what you want it to look like, God, every step of the way. With heads bowed and eyes closed, you know that the, the first step to experiencing God's purpose is found through salvation in Jesus Christ alone. That's when your life begins. It's when the old life has passed away and behold, all things become brand new. And you begin living a brand new life in Him. He seals your future in Christ writes your name in the Lamb's book of life in heaven and you begin walking out those steps of fulfilling your purpose. And what that looks like is, is, is recognizing before God that you, like I am, like we all are, sinners who God loves very much. But we need his grace and his mercy and his blood to just cover us and take those sins away. And you do that by saying, God, please forgive me of my sins. Forgive me. Thank you for loving me. It's believing upon Jesus Christ as being the son of God and the only way, the only gate that leads to that good pastor, that leads to him, the good shepherd. The only way is through Jesus. And it's confessing in your heart and your mind with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and setting him on the throne of your heart. And when you do that, you can make heaven your home. You can literally change your eternal address. And I would urge you, if you've not made that decision, to make that decision right here and right now, whether you're watching online or whether you're sitting in this room, make that decision right now. God has drawn you here today for this very reason, to lead you into that life-changing relationship with him. Last service, two people changed their eternal address. Will you be one of them that is added to the kingdom of God? Will you be one of them that'll say yes right now to life change, to hope, to heaven, to Jesus? If that's you, heads are bowed, eyes are closed. We're going to pray this prayer as a church family. But if you're in this room and you're making this decision, I want to know who I'm praying with and agreeing with right now. So would you just raise your hand in this room if you're making that decision? God, you're so faithful. You're so good. Sweet Holy Spirit, I thank you, God, for your mercy and your grace. If you're watching online, I want you to comment all in in the comment section below. Let's pray this prayer to, together today as a church family. Father, I know I'm a sinner. I thank you for loving me. I pray that you'll forgive me. I believe with all my heart, Jesus is the Son of God. I confess with my mouth today, Jesus Christ is Lord. 
I make him Lord of my life. I place him on the throne of my heart. Never to be the same again. I want your purpose, not my plans. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.